Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. This is Curse of Strahd. And we've had our session zero yesterday. It's been a little bit quiet on videos because uh, I've been actually playing the game, you know. <laughs> um, so we had our session zero yesterday and we've got four out of our seven characters completed. We've got one that is about 90% there, just trying to find the appropriate image to go with it. And we've got two people who couldn't make session zero because of other commitments who will be catching up later in the week. So this video really is just a little bit of an update and to show you what I'm doing as, oh, I don't know, session 0 0.5 if you like, behind the scenes. Now normally as a DM, I wouldn't have an awful lot to do because I've already prepped my adventure and now I've got my characters. But of course we're in Foundry and there's a whole bunch of things that I want to make sure are going to work. So I have been in already, as you can see, and put in our portraits for some of these new characters into my landing page. So uh, let's give you a quick introduction. Uh, we have Silas here, who is a first level cleric, and they are from the Twilight uh, School. School? <laughs> you know what I mean. So we've got them built. We've got all of their stuff here. Now, again, for those of you who haven't been following, which is fine, of course, we've built our characters in D&D &D Beyond because it's really nice and simple the way it steps you through. You can't really miss anything. And then I use DDB Importer to pull them into Foundry. And with the updates to the D&D &D game engine, thankfully because of the, uh, the work between Wizards of the Coasts and Foundry, and we've got that partnership now, it pulls things over in a much more sensible way. It's even better than it was. Still not necessarily suitable for automation, but certainly much better than it used to be. But I'm not using automation, so it doesn't matter, does it? So uh, so we've got our character here. We've got all of our stats. It's all pulled those in correctly. Um, we've got our equipment that's pulled in. No problems there. Um, all of our various uh, uh, features uh, and our spell lists, because this is a cleric, so they've got access to it. Now, the challenge with clerics, of course, is because they have access to so many spells that you kind of need to have them all sort of ready to go in Foundry. I've just, uh, let me just give him back his things. Um, but I'll come back to that in a moment. So because this is a Twilight Cleric, one of the things that this Cleric has is this Eyes of Night ability. If I come under Features, it's got it here, which gives this character a dark vision of 300 feet, which is enormous. And that's fine, and that works no problem. But they also had the ability to uh, to give that to up to three other willing people and give them dark vision. That was a bit of a pain in the bum, I won't kid you, um, because it was like, well, when they want that, how do I do it? I can go into each token, I can adjust their vision uh, to give them dark vision 300 foot, and then when they stop using it, I've got to then go back in. Because it can be done on three people, I've got to do that three times, that's going to slow the game up. So I did do a bit of fiddling. One of the things I had to do, and I've created a new item called Eyes of Night, and I made some changes to it. I'll show you this quite quickly. If you're interested, I can go through it in a bit more detail. But under the Effects tab here, which is where it gives you the passive ability, I had this is where I had to make a couple of changes under Effects. So what it was doing, it was giving you straight away, default, bringing it in from D&D Beyond, this system attributes senses dark vision override and saying they had 300 foot dark vision. And it looks like that's what you want. What that was doing was updating the character sheet to say this person's got dark vision, but it wasn't updating the token vision to match what it said. So the character was saying like, yeah, the character's got it, but it wasn't actually affecting on, on, on the game map itself, which of course is more important. Um, so I've had to include a couple of extra lines on here. Uh, alt Sight Vision Mode and override the vision mode from normal to dark vision. And Alt Sight Range set that dark vision range to 300. So whenever this passive is active, it will change them to dark vision 300 feet. Now to access these and be able to do that, to get those token things, I have, after just doing the mod video of this is what I'm using, I had to add another mod in. And this is kind of what I was saying in that video about don't add mods unless you know what they're doing and you actually need them. 
So active token effects is what I needed because I needed to set an active effect on a token. So that's what I needed. That's what gives me access to those extra bits. So that was my one of my first challenges that I did. Um, and again, if you, if you want to go through that stuff, leave comments and stuff. I can walk through how we can do that and show you where to get that information. But I don't want to bore you, not in this video anyway. Okay, moving on. So we've got this cleric. Our next character, this very uh, Disney princess kind of uh, Snow Whitey type looking character is our druid. So we've got a cleric and a druid. So um, uh, no problem with that, of course. That's going to be very interesting in Curse of Strahd where everything's very kind of... Uh, you know, twisted woods and damp and dark and wolves and things like that. It's going to be really interesting to see how how, how this player plays that druid. Um, again, pulled everything through nicely. They are they've decided that they are going to be the cook for the party, which was quite nice. And of course, we've got their big spell list as well. So we've got cleric and druid spells. There is some crossover, but. We need to make sure those are working as well, which is a little bit laborious, but that's fine. Uh, next we have, we have a Warlock Dragonborn, so another spellcaster. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, again, all our equipment's pulled through. We've got their features. We've got a breath weapon on this character, so we need to make sure our breath weapon will work. And again, we've got some spells. It's Warlock, so very few, nice and easy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Of course, it's Eldritch Blast, so we can check to make sure all of that is working. We've also got some damage resistance. And our final uh, character to look at is we have a High Elf Wizard, another spellcaster. I mean, I've never had a party where there's so many spellcasters. Uh, they've just all decided spellcasters is the way to go so far. So again, yep, it's pulled everything through. Um, we've got some uh, a few different things from being a, a, a high elf, of course. I've just realised I've left all of the Eyes of Night on here where I was playing with it. I don't want those on there. No, you don't get that ability for free. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's good. Quick, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Um, and of course, being a wizard, we've got more spells, but being a wizard, they've only got access to very few, which is very nice indeed. That's where we're going to be starting at. Now, what I have to bear in mind, and this is the bane of wizards, apart from the fact they always start off really, really squishy, um, is how do they get more spells? Oh, well, you find spell books. And how often do us DMs remember to put in spell books that they can use and utilize? So far, what we've planned through the Curse of Strahd, there is not a single spell book. There is also not a single magic item to bolster this party and help them improve. And that was something I realised when I was going through Session Zero. Is like, hang on a minute, the equipment progression is almost non-existent. There aren't really any shops to go and buy better armor and stuff. So that is something I need to make sure I include. Um, some stuff they can find, um, like in the death house, uh, a suit of chainmail armor. One of the piece, one of the armor bits that they actually they look at is real armor, human sized. They can nick it if they want to. Okay, so things like that, they can upgrade their kit. Doesn't have to be magical. First level. Currently, these guys haven't bought armor beyond leather. Okay, so I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, yeah, I've got, got your passive on here as well. Get out. <laughs> so we've got, yeah, a wizard, a warlock, a druid, and a cleric. And the character that's 90% done, guess what they're playing? They're playing a sorcerer. <laughs> Weird. Okay, so all of the spell casters, we've got pretty much one of each. Obviously, we're missing some of the half casters like Paladin and, and Ranger. Um... But uh, yeah, and then we've got two players still left to make their characters, and it'd be really interesting what they choose to go. Um, we've got some healing in the party, which is great. Um, but we've got no tank. Like, not at all. We haven't got a tank. So we've got no fighter, we've got no barbarian, and we've got no rogue. So it'd be interesting to see what they choose to do. I'm not going to force them to play those roles at all. They can play whatever the heck they like. I will be pointing out that there is no tank, but that's everybody's responsibility. Um, and if they go without one, that's fine. So, yeah, no tank, but I've got seven players. So that would help balance it anyway, just the pure amount of firepower. 
um, that they've got compared to a party of four with a tank. So we'll have to see how it goes. So I made these gits roll their stats um, because that's the way you know I am. Uh, and I have got some dice on the table here and clicking on this it rolls my dice, it's rolling, so you can see on the right hand side it's rolling their stat block for them. Um, so it's doing 4d6, keep the highest 3, and that's just a little, little. Um, it's just a monk's active tile trigger with an image of some dice. So I was getting them to use that and I was, I chose to say you get two sets, pick which set you want. Uh, obviously they are kind of going, you know, well, the first set's got an 18 in it, as well as a 15 and a 14. That's a damn strong set, as it turns out. So that's the way I chose to do it, to add some randomness in. Again, the way they play is far more important than their stat blocks. Um, it just is, is Curse of Strahd. So other things that I needed to do once I've done those, I've already kind of gone through and made sure their character sheets are okay. I'm going to switch scenes here. Uh, to uh, the wolf battle, because this is where I've been prepping them, is I needed to make sure that if I bring out one that I've not done, uh, let's bring out Morgan. If I move Morgan around, yeah, can you see the way she's turning? Because that's how I want things like my dire wolf here. I want them to be auto rotating. So one of the things I needed to do was to not do it on the token on here but go into the player character. We can do Morgan right now. We can go to that character's prototype token. So just so you know, if it's on the board, it's an active token. I'm updating the prototype token, which means every time I drag this character onto the game board, the token will be created with these stats. So I won't need to keep changing them. If I just change the one that's, that, that's on the map here, as soon as I drag it out again, it's going to default to the wrong stuff. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, so just check, well, I've got the name in there. That needs to be updated when we get a surname and things like that. Under appearance, I've already got the right image. I have done my images um, and I've set them all to fill because a couple of the images weren't quite the right size. So it just stretches them a little to make them a bit neater. Um, as long as you're not stretching it, it's too much. Uh, because I've got splatter on, if I want to, I can change the colour of blood for a given token. Uh, I don't want to do that, but I could decide, I don't know, high elves have pale blue blood. I absolutely could do that if I wanted to. Uh, weird them out, that's for sure. And at the bottom here is where I've got that auto-rotate. If you're wondering about auto-rotate, what it does, um, go see the video. Go see the add-on playlist. It's in there. Every one of my add-ons is in that playlist. A couple of them are a little bit out of date because they're pre-version 12 or pre the current D&D &D release. I'm slightly behind with that anyway because I don't want to mess with it when I've got a live game running. <laughs> I don't update unless you have to, so get it stable uh, and I won't be updating for a while yet, I don't think. Uh, so yeah, so I want to lock that, uh, that auto-rotate. I'm going to turn that off. Check vision, so dark vision, 60 foot, high elf, that's correct. Uh, we're not shedding any light, which is good. And I want the hit point, hit points always displayed for the owner of the token. So the, the player of this character will always see their hit points, but nobody else is. This one will always see their hit point bar, but nobody else will see it. As the DM, I can see all of them, including the monsters. So that was quite important to do. So if I carry on moving this token around, that's not actually changed that behavior. If I delete it and drag this Morgan out again, you can see that's now not rotating as we would expect. And if I zoom out, we can see that circle of dark vision absolutely as we would expect. Uh, so why is your dark vision is too big? Why is that because I was messing with, so this is where I was messing with that vision stuff. So this character over here is the one that has that special sight and I was playing with getting it working and I've accidentally stuck it onto uh, more cane here. Let me just check that I've not stuffed up more canes core token. Dark vision 60 foot is what it should be. So if I delete you and drag you out again, there we go. I've got <laughs> see what I mean by updating that 
uh, that prototype token is what I need to do. So if I fluff up a token, something goes hideously wrong, I can just quickly delete it, drag another version out, and it will reset it back to what it should be, which is great. Uh, we've got no dark vision here. I created a light source here just so I was checking vision. Um, these two haven't got it. This one has, and you can see the actual lit area is in color, and the stuff that dark vision is covering is in black and white. I, that's, I think that's beautiful. I love the way that foundry does that. I think it's really, really nice. Okie dokie. Whoa, we're moving fast, aren't we? But I just, I don't want to go into too much detail on this. There might be some other areas that I do go into a bit more detail. Um, so the next thing that I have started doing, but haven't finished yet, is going through and saying, well, hang on, things like these spell effects, sometimes I want them to actually do stuff. And when I say do stuff, I mean mostly that they play a animation. So to get those animations, uh, 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 we have manage modules to play those animations. I've got automated animations on, which I already had, um, but I've been cheeky. Um, and I have updated my, where is it? Do you know what? I, why can't, <laughs> where's it gone? It's, it's changed the name, obviously. Uh, da, 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 da. Hello? Oh, how bizarre. It's in there somewhere. It's not actually... Why is that not active in here? That's bizarre. Um, because I've been using it. <laughs> uh, I updated my JB2A. So that's the big pack of the graphics and animations um, that we can apply. Let me just save that. It's weird. Oh, that's why. Right. So that's something I'm going to need to fix because my cursor strad module. Yeah, I can't enable it. Because, oh, how strange. Uh, well, it's not strange, actually. It makes perfect sense. There we go. It's saying active modules. That's fine. Let me just check that that has actually stuck now. You've enabled a module CG cursor strad, but it's dependence. Right, okay. So I'll need to fix that in the background. That's absolutely fine. Uh, that's just because I've updated it. So it's called something different, even though it does the same stuff and more. So uh, I will fix that in the background. Nothing for you to worry about. But using JB2A, I have updated to their patron version, which just gives, you don't need to, it just gives me access to more effects I can choose from for my spells and things. So I have gone through and updated, let's move back into the light, a few of those spells. Um, so for example, when I know my druid will be using Entangle, so when my druid chooses to use Entangle, I'm just not going to consume that, I'm going to get my template to place that down, and when I do, we get a little animation play on the caster, and we get an animation. So rather than just having that, what is frankly quite an ugly green tile, um, I get this animation on that tile, which makes it look a bit nicer, I think. So that's what I chose to do uh, with some of these spells. Um, let's end that concentration. Because I haven't got automation on, I can end the concentration, but it doesn't automatically uh, get rid of the template. So that's another thing I might look at, might not. It depends how verbose this party is with using those area effect spells, if it starts to drive me nuts a bit. But, you know, you saw how quick that was to get rid of. I don't need to automate stuff. Um, so even some really simple spells like uh, like Mending, I just added a little graphic to that. So if you watch this character in the middle there when I cast Mending, poof, we get this little puff of rose petals or whatever they are. Um, I just added on a few bits like that because I just thought it would be nice. Uh, it just, just adds that little something, doesn't it? Where are you? Come over here, you because I've been through and done a lot of these spells as well. And we know things like, um, well, well, we can do Guiding Bolt. Uh, let's target somebody else, of course. Hang on a minute. Thank you very much. Uh, we cast Guiding Bolt. Uh, and we should get a little animation of when I do the attack. There we go, casting spell. 
then it fires off, poo, and then it hits the target. So I just added a few little bits like that. And what I thought was nice is for a lot of these, so if I look at Guiding Bolt, for example, it's an evocation spell or evocation, depending how you want to say it. And if I just go in and edit that, um, I can go to this AA, which is that automated animations. And you can see that it's found it. And what I... That's not the one I want. Hang on. Let me go the other way. I just want to make sure... <laughs> because that's the spell I don't want the spell I want the core setting so again it's another one of those it's a bit like the token if I update the spell on the character sheet it will only apply to that spell on that character sheet not to everybody uh, which is good in many ways and I'll explain why that's good in a moment but if I go to launch here um, and I can look at range I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I put in here including guiding bolt so I have got a source animation, so basically on the caster, um, if I open that up, it's going to do the magic sign for evocation or evocation spells, uh, and it's blue. So when I cast it, that happens on the character, and the primary animation is the spell guiding bolt, uh, and I can choose which color I want. Um, I've chosen pink, purple, but it can be whatever I like, really, um, white, blue for example. So that's basically how I've gone through and done a whole bunch of those spells and you can see if I look at this I added quarter staff on that wasn't on there and this character uses quarter staff. Um, shrink all that. Um, crossbow and bow was already there disintegrate eldritch blast so I can customize that firebolt guiding bolt magic missile ray of frost scorching ray witch bolt a whole bunch of those were already on there but I can tweak any ones I want. On token, I did add some of these. Shield of Faith, Sanctuary, Protection from Good and Evil, Inflict Wounds, Command, Bless, Bane. Those are all ones I added on. Uh, and if I just pick Bane, for example, I added an on-source animation, Magic signal for in, uh, magic Sign for Enchantment. So again, it just shows that Spellcaster is, you know, you can see who's cast it, including when the NPC has cast it. And then the primary animation, uh, that it plays on the recipient of the spell. So we've got all of those in there. And the template ones we've got here, sleep, create, destroy water, fairy, fire, entangle. And I mentioned earlier about the breath weapon for fire. So what the way the automated, sorry, the automatic animations works is if you use an item, say cure wounds, it will look up to say, have I got cure wounds anywhere in here? I have. So that's the animations I'm going to run for that. So uh, I've got the template ones. I've got a couple of aura ones for detecting good and evil. Um, I pop those in. They're not working brilliantly, but they're okay for the moment. Um, and there's an active effect for frightened as well. So we can add those on for those active effects if we want to. So not going to go through it we have done it again go back to the playlist of add-ons and you can see where we actually went through and did those it pretty much works the same um, but this is part of my setup is checking each of those prototype tokens are correct and their vision is correct and then checking any of the um, things like um, vigilant blessing do I need to do anything with it is there any automation I need to put in there Eyes of Night, do I need to do anything with that? Yes, I did. So I have done. The spells. Now, again, which ones are actually already working um, and which ones are not? You know, if, if Cure Wounds isn't working, it's fine. You tell me to do Cure Wounds. I need to hover over it to go, oh, yeah, D8 plus your spell casting ability. They can roll that dice. Happy days. Easy peasy. Uh, away we go we don't need to worry about it too much but it is nice to have those extra little touches and that's what my players are not expecting or they're not aware of yet so when they start playing they're going to see those little bits um, a little bit of extra eye candy uh, to kind of wow them and appreciate the effort I've put in a bit more I <laughs> hope it's all about me right I'm the DM because it's all about me um, so yeah, I just went through all of these as well. You saw I just did some things on mending um, and we looked at Entangle. So all of these characters, I just went through and started, I haven't finished, started doing that. But let me show you the breath weapon. Um, so yeah, if I want to use my, my breath weapon here, let's not consume. 
uh, it's going to give me that template that I can then position to fire off wherever I want to. Let's, well, let's fire it off to the, uh, the, the top left there. Uh, and soon as I click to place that, you'll see an animation starts and then and it's kind of perfect, isn't it? So we've got our template that shows us where he's breathing. I think what might be nice, what might be nice is to get this template to, once you've placed it, it disappears because on placing, we're going to know who it's covering up. Um, so we know who's going to be hit with it and then it will get rid of the template and just have the animation so I'll have a little fiddle and see if I can do that because again it's not a big deal for me to go oh yeah okay let's just uh, get rid of that template now um, it, unlike Entangle which is going to stay there for the duration I do not have automation MIDI QRL times up and all of those things so it won't end automatically um, those things absolutely would help with that so we're going to see how it goes with what we've got, which is very much not automated. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if we get a certain way in and go, do you know what? Just things like those templates timing out, um, those spell effects timing out, maybe we will end up adding that automation in. Not the not necessarily the combat to hit damage and things, but just things like timing out spell effects and stuff. That might be the next step we choose to take. But I want to run it as uh, bare bones, if you like, as I can. I'm on the wrong thing. Stop targeting her. Um, I want to run it as bare bones as I can to start with, make sure my players are happy with everything, the way it works, before we start adding that level of complication onto it. And actually finding out for this group which things are actually going to be time savers and are worth bothering with because doing all these spells and stuff like that these animations that is really time consuming fair enough once i've done it i've done it i don't need to ever do it again um not in this game world um and of course i would want to be able to transfer those over to another game world as well um but it does take time now, one last thing on those automated animations. If I open up this character and this character side by side and look at their spells, whoops, look at their spells, um, we're going to have some things that are going to cross over. Um, guiding Bolt, is that one of them? Oh, I'm so rubbish remembering what who has what. Um, but there are going to be certain things like Purify Food and Drink. So they've both got that spell. So as long as I do it once, it will work for both of them. So I don't have to do it, you know, repeatedly go back and go, oh, no, I'm doing it. I've got so many spellcasters. I'm having to do the same thing again and again. No, I'm going to do the core one, like Fairy Fire is another one. They both get access to. Healing Word is another one. They both get access to. But if I wanted to, I could, on Silas, I could change that to, say, Food and Drink 1. And on Olwyn, I could change that spell to be food and drink two. That way, I could set up different animations for these characters. So maybe when Silas casts it, it's red. When Olwyn casts it, it's blue. So you can do that. And you can do the same with things like Magic Missile. So if you've got more than one person casting Magic Missile... You can ask them, it's like, well, what does yours look like? And they'll tell you what it looks like. And then you can create that spell, that animation effect to match that character and really create that sense of individuality. Especially if you've got multiple spell casters like I have. And it's like, oh, we're all firing off the same kind of spell every round. It's like, are you? Well, let's try and differentiate those. Let's add a bit of flavor to it. It might be that we add some sounds to it and they're different, you know, zips and pops or whatever it might be. But anyway, yet again, I am rambling on. But I just wanted to let you know that that's what I'm doing between session zero and actual session one, checking everything works okay. Um, and of course, I know the combat works, but I will be doing some basic combat of, right, you're going to... You know, you're going to attack with your equipment. Let's make your attack with your quarter staff. We just make sure that that's going to work. Boom, boom, boom. Excellent. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Uh, but so I'm going to do those sorts of things as well, especially for any bits of equipment. And in fact, actually, 
what did I not see then? Let's try that again, because I added a quarterstaff animation on. Oh, I think I know what I did. So is there an animation that comes with this? Yeah, there is. Way there it is. I just didn't see it. So yeah, so we've got that quarterstaff animation that goes when we attack that, which is exactly what I wanted. I thought for a horrible moment I'd done something silly, like put it on the quarterstaff for this guy rather than, you know, making it a core ability. Right, I'm going to shut up now. Uh, I hope that's interesting. Uh, just, you know, it's part of what I'm doing just to get set up. So I thought I would share that with you. If you've got any questions about any of this, like the auto random a little auto animate ah oh. <laughs> the automation the automated animation i'll get there in a moment the automated animation stuff like I say there is a playlist we've got a video in that but if if you find that you know that's not quite working drop comments i'm more than happy to go through it again uh, very whistle stop in this one um, again the the turning of the tokens thing playlist there's a video in there showing you what that is etc and pretty much everything you've just seen in this video is covered in a previous video somewhere if you can't find it let me know and I will pin it for you um, or if it's out of date I'll redo it there we go thank you very much guys you take care and I will see you in the next one